Welcome please to the JVG podcast Where these G's are gonna spread their seeds of knowledge About the league, it's flourishing with ease These funny catches seem to be well read, esteemed and honest Like the man himself, Jeff Van Gundy They are high IQ, so cerebral and funny So if you're on the bus, just border on the dunny Listen to the JVG NBA Tribute Show Why did you have to do it again? Because we both clapped and we'll confuse the computer. Okay. Now nah, I probably would have been fine. Okay. Well, <laughs> either way, welcome to episode 129 <laughs> of the Jeff and Andy Tribute Show. Um, welcoming you in this week is Lucas. Joining me as always, though, is Marco. Oh my god, I jumped the gun. <laughs> yeah. For the first time in 129 episodes. Hey, what's up? Not much, man. Um, now, uh, to my understanding, there is a Jerry Seinfeld AI thing happening in the world right now. <laughs> I personally haven't seen it, uh, but my brother came into the room just outraged about it, and I was and like I just didn't listen to anything he said. But what happened? Okay, so this is so funny because when you, I was riding home just just an hour ago, and Lucas texted me being like, "Something happened with Seinfeld." Like I haven't seen it. Yeah. And in my mind, I was like, "There's a slim chance he doesn't even know it's the AI Seinfeld." Yeah. No, I knew it was the AI. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. But how funny would it have been if you didn't know it was the AI side? But what do you mean the AI side? Like someone made an AI about Jerry. Uh, so basically, uh, there is a... There's like an AI and it's just constantly Twitch streaming like an ever-evolving episode of Seinfeld. Oh my God, that's so cool. So it's got like... I, th- I think it does. It does like Jerry does... He does his monologue at the beginning. mm and it's got the apartment, and then there's like a George, a Kramer, an Elaine, and a Jerry AI. That How just do they like look? Interact with each other. They kind of look like The Simpsons. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, how, th- how often has it been going on? I think it, like the last few weeks, as far as I know. All right. And like it's kind of evolving, it's learning more and more like how to do a Seinfeld joke. Cool. It, it's either like, oh wow, that was genuinely like almost funny. Like, a, like it gets all the beats right, and you're like, yeah. Yeah. Or it's like fucking so creepy. Okay. Like, it just okay. says like the most like worrying existential shit right um and then today uh the ai got banned from twitch uh wow for because jerry told a transphobic joke oh my god in his opening oh my god his opening monologue um yeah i mean is it on your screen i, I can show i can show you it if you want to if you want to watch it um, oh that's it looks oh it looks like uh, grim fandango yeah true that's a good that's a good um comp that's a good comp you know, loves just talking about the Lee, certain things like that. Um, all right, well, we can't get the fucking tech to work, so I'm going to read it. It's at, like, it's just, it is offensive, but it's just crazy that a computer came up with this. Oh, okay, yep, so you're still doing your thing there, are you? It's just gyrating. Go on. That's good. You're, yeah, okay, here There's we go. like 50 people here and no one is laughing. Anyone have any suggestions? I'm thinking about doing a bit about how being transgender is actually a mental illness. Or how all liberals are secretly gay and want to impose their will on everyone. Or something about how transgender people are ruining the fabric of society. But no one is laughing, so I'm going to stop. Thanks for coming out tonight. See you next time. Where'd everybody go? (laughs) Oh my god. It must be so much worse on the video. Yeah. Well, it's just just like a computerized version of Jerry Seinfeld saying it. That's so um. It's just that just is a broken computer rambling. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't really finish the point. No. I do. I do agree that all liberals are gay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we have we have that on the record. <laughs> Where did um, everyone go? <laughs> but but it's it's funny because it, yeah, it feels like um, it's like. It's like a combo of the Kramer at the... Where, where was oh, he? At the Laugh yeah, Factory. At the La- Kramer at the Laugh Factory and like Dave Chappelle. Oh, have you seen Dave Chappelle at the Laugh Factory? No. So funny. Yeah. <laughs> He's talking about how like the only thing he can ever think about when he goes... When he sees the Laugh Factory background is Kramer fucking up. <laughs> He's like, that's the, that's the day I learned I'm like 20% black, 80% comedian. <laughs> so funny. Um, yeah, so well, that's been banned from Twitch. So if you want to... Uh, if you want to watch Seinfeld, you're just going to have to watch it the old-fashioned way. Yeah, with a VHS disc. Yeah, exactly right. But that's not what we're here to talk about, is it? No, not at all, actually. But we are going to stay in New York City. <laughs> um, well, briefly, anyway. Oh. <laughs> well, and then we're going to come back to New York yeah. City. So, uh, Brooklyn, <laughs> not New York, was in a trade recently. Mm. We have a trade to announce. If you haven't seen it, 
uh, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. Even if you aren't an NBA fan or even a basketball fan, you would have seen Kyrie Irving has been dealt to the Mavs alongside Markeith Morris, a.k.a. Mook. Uh, and the Nets are receiving Dinwiddie for his second go-around in mm-hmm. uh, the Brooklyn Nets. Dorian Finney-Smith, uh, a first-round pick and two seconds or yeah, one second? I'm protected 2029 first and 2027, 29 seconds. Yeah. yeah. So I guess there's not really... I feel like everything's already out there. It's just our responses that uh, yeah. that you're here for. What's yours? <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I think there's so many angles to look at this from. First of all, Kyrie requested the trade like two days before it happened. Mm. So that's very, you know, that's a good turnaround for something. I, I initially thought it was going to be like just him trying to gas up a contract extension. Like classic Kyrie, like I'm not getting what I want, so I'm going to fuck everything up. Yeah. But um, yeah, Brooklyn went out and I think probably, I think this was probably the best deal they could have gotten. Like I think genuinely uh, given what, oh my God, shut up, cat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like the only the only other sort of solid deal that had been outlined was uh, with the Lakers, and it was you know the old faithful Russell Westbrook, and uh, I think it was only one of the firsts was their initial offer. True, um, but Joe Tsai came out and said, "Yeah, I'm definitely not." Oh well, it's it's come out that he was uh, definitely not going to deal him to the Lakers mm. just because he's like, "I'm not going to give Kyrie what he wants. I'm not going to give the Lakers what they want." Mm. Um, so yeah, first first thought, good deal, good deal for the Nets. They got the best. Uh, they got the best. They got the best available option. Like Dinwiddie is just a really, really solid rotation player. I think he's going to fit in on that team really well. And DFS is just like the perfect, perfect player to put next to Kevin Durant. And just like I, you know, it it strengthens an area that they're not really weak in. Like they have mm. good wing depth, and now they've just gotten better wing depth. Um, so yeah, that's my initial thought from the Brooklyn Nets point of view. And we're going to get to all the other points of view <laughs> as we go through this pod. Yeah. What did you think from the Nets perspective? I think DFS, it goes even beyond that. Like what superstar doesn't mm. want DFS on their team? Like unbelievable defender, maybe a top 10 defender in the league. Great shooter, maybe a good shooter, but you know, he hits open threes, which yeah. is all you need next to a superstar. I think, um, yeah, now the Nets can run a unit of. Simo, O'Neal, KD, DFS, and Claxton mm. just defensively is impenetrable. Like, that is such a stronghold. Uh, and two of those guys can't shoot offensively, being Simo and Claxton. Mm. But I think that there's enough firepower, or at least three-point shooting ability from the other three, where you can run it for, like, w- without it being exploited for yeah. uh, Simmons and Claxton's, like, shortcomings um, as shooters. Uh, but I think now the Nets have the best oh, I don't know if they have the best oh, fuck <laughs> what I was gonna say is I don't know if they have the best roster in the league but they be- definitely have the best top 13 players yeah. in the league. <laughs> but there are 13 players you want to play on this team yeah I-, I went through the list earlier I won't bore you guys with the names but it's all the ones you would assume yeah all the ones that are above Dayron Sharp <laughs> in points per game as and well even as Dayron Sharp like, <laughs> um, he, was- he was shooting 80 percent from three yeah. for a large portion of the season there you go. 80 of 100 <laughs> um but I think this is, yeah, it's, I think it's a really good deal. I can't remember who said it. I think it was JJ Redick who went fucking in on Kyrie, as well as I'm sure a lot of other ex-NBA players did. But talking about how the Nets must have just been so fed up with the situation, yeah. uh, uh, seeing as how quick the deal happened. Um, the Lakers, I saw I saw that was the, the trade that they proposed. And then I saw that Joe Sy went back and said, you have to add Austin Reeves and I think Max Christie mm. or something. Mm. And if that is something the Lakers said no to, then that's an, another discussion yeah. we can have. But also, <clears throat> this package blows that oh, one out of the water. 100%. Like, they, fuck, this package is just like s- that much better. I mean, D- DFS and Dinwiddie, one of them alone is better <laughs> than Reeves and Christie. Yeah. Yeah, I imagine Side. I think he, he, he must have just said that. He yeah. must, He must have just been gassing them up, yeah. you know. Uh, and never having any intention with really dealing with them, or you know, there's I guess there's a there's a chance that he just wasn't aware that Mavs were going to offer this. Item. Yeah, because like, you know, when the Mavs name, I think after Kyrie re- requested a trade, it was Lakers, Suns, and Mavs were like the three yeah. main interested parties. And I was like, well, I, I don't really know what the Mavs will give up to get Kyrie, and yeah. I'm, like I don't think they gave up too much. Yeah. I think they gave up a lot, but yeah, this is just like. 
a Kyrie Irving appropriate package for a yeah. team for a team that wants to get rid of him as well. Yeah. Um, and just on that note, that I think there's just so many fun lineups that Brooklyn can run now. Like what what you said just then. Uh, you know, if you're protecting a lead or if you just want to like strangle the game, <laughs> yeah. But like you can you can throw out like uh, Spencer Dinwiddie, Cam Thomas, uh, Royce O'Neal, KD, and Claxton, or you can even you could even go like small, throw out DFS and uh, Royce O'Neal with KD or you know one of them playing the five and just have yeah. shooting absolutely <clears throat> everywhere. Yeah. Uh, you know, Cam Thomas has had uh, forty plus in his last two games, yeah. <laughs> so like. You've just got, I think, no matter, they especially, they feel like a playoff sort of, they feel like a team that's set up for the playoffs. I think like the only, the only drawback on this roster is like, once you go from KD to whoever the next best player is, like, you're going to be going to KD every, every single possession down the stretch. Yeah. Like maybe Dinwiddie gets one look. Hey, maybe Cam Thomas gets one look, but like that's not that's not inspiring a lot of confidence in me. But apart from that, I think it's like the most playoff ready roster mm. in the league, pretty much. Do you reckon? The, do you reckon it's ring ready? It's so hard to it's so hard to say. Like, I was trying to I was trying to compare it to the Warriors last season mm. because the Warriors I feel like KD Steph they're on the same tier. But then I was thinking about the drop from. Kate, uh, from Steph to the next player, mm. and I was like, "Man, being Professor Twenty Twenty Hindsight, was it Wiggins? It was. Okay, in terms <laughs> of how well they played, yeah, in the in the finals for sure. So then it's Wiggins, and then I think it's Draymond. Mm. But then I reckon the next two players go to the Nets in Dinwiddie and DFS, or mm. potentially Claxton, depending on um, depending on how you want to look at it. But I think that those three this season are better than Clay was last season. Yeah. I think though, the issue with the Nets this season is like, and, and sorry, the comparison to the Warriors is just like the Warriors had such gamers at the mm. bottom of their rotation that like fifth through, oh no, fourth through, no fifth through eighth player mm. were just like would die for that team. Yeah. Whereas like the fifth through eighth player or even the fifth through thirteenth player for the Nets are like they're such finesse players. Like Utah Watanabe is not fucking diving on a loose ball yeah. for your team. Yeah. Edmund Sumner is like fucking also not diving on yeah, a loose yeah, ball yeah. for your team. I, I take I get what you're saying. Yeah. But like maybe that's you know maybe that maybe that's what you instill in the last the second yeah. half of the season when you're like, this is our squad. And like, you know, I think you could very easily make the argument that this this team is kind of better on the court with Kyrie, without Kyrie mm. you know like like they've gotten they've gotten enough pieces that are actually like complementary to Kevin yeah. Durant to make them like better than better as the sum of their parts than they were with Kyrie I think it's tricky it's so tricky because Kyrie and, yeah. if Kyrie and KD are healthy and happy in the playoffs like that's a very different story I think mm. but and then so it's like alright we've only had you know Chuck Vaughn for mm. what uh, 30 games now 35 yeah something like that um yeah when did they when they sack nash it was like 10 15 oh games. 45 Jesus. 45 yeah yeah okay so he's you know he's done a really good job with them and he's probably just coming into his yeah into like you know he's coming into the ime yudoka like mm. great stretch at the end of last season of, yeah. of, of his um of his coaching career with the nets um so yeah i but i think like i, I watched i watched six minutes of their game against the clippers today uh, on my lunch break and the kind of the doggedness of Cam Thomas and mm. Edmund Summer was like I was so surprised by it like yeah. they were they were like 11 points down at the half oh they, no they were like f- 4 points down at the half the Clippers went on a 7-0 run to start the third quarter and then they just like defended really really tough like put everything into every posi- uh, possession and then just got to the line like uh Cam Thomas and Sumner just started like drawing fouls every every play up the stretch, and then they yeah I think they went on like a nine zero run and like brought it back to a one point game yeah uh, or a one or two point game, and it was like yeah you're doing all of this and like no Ben Simmons who isn't that sort of player now yeah but like he's getting paid like it and no Kevin Durant so that felt like a good sign for me that like these guys their teams kind of. I mean, you might look at it as upheaval in one way. If, you, if you're if you in that locker room, you might be like, okay, this is the end of the upheaval. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, without their star players on the floor, playing against, like Cam Thomas is getting guarded by Kawhi. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
they were really it was it was really like an effort thing not a skill thing yeah for me in, it, and that's from like watching six minutes of them today yeah i've, I've obviously watched you know the previous nets games but <laughs> that, that that was that was my takeaway yeah, I think it. I think you know. N- don't read in too much into this uh, Cam Cameron Thomas performance. No, absolutely as like, not. I don't know, sorry, I don't think it's a time to draw conclusions. Mm. I think it's. I think he's shown heaps of promising stuff as a scorer, um, but you know, it's still a guess if you're going to yeah. say Cam Thomas is going to be a difference maker in the playoffs. Definitely. Um, but I th- also think it's something you should be happy about mm. as the Nets and as a Nets fan. It's like if Cam Thomas can just win you a game mm. in the regular season, especially against such a good team. Mm. Um, then that you know only feels better when KD, Dinwiddie, and DFS return. Oh, two of them join this team, and then one of them returns yeah. to this team. Yeah. Um, and then back to my c- comparison to the Warriors. I think the other thing I want to make mention of, um, just as you know, the accountability thing. <laughs> uh, I think though it's I think that the comparison KD to Steph is still a bit unfair to Steph because like we know how good Steph is as the best player on a mm, team, mm, mm. and how good KD is as the best player on a team especially when KD doesn't have like another, you know, player on his tier, um, on his team, uh, such as in Oklahoma when yeah. they should have won the ring. And yeah. in Brooklyn when they should have just figured out how to win games. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, I've completely lost my train of thought after that. Would you like to, where would you want to steer this next? Oh, actually, no, Jacques Vaughan. Um, I just don't think enough can be said about what he's done as well. Uh, and that's actually all I had to say. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, and you'd you'd be so happy as him. I feel like you're coming into like, God, the situation in Brooklyn was just so bad 45 games ago, and yeah. it was such a part of why it got better. And then like, it's also kind of sorted itself out. Yeah, bit. like for Brooklyn. I, I think we'll talk about this at the end of the season, uh, whenever that is for Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. But they really, they really haven't got, they haven't had to eat crow as much as they really should have. Yeah. You know, for putting all their money on KD, Kyrie, and then Harden, they've kind of come out all right. Like the Ben Simmons thing is bad, mm. but like Harden wanted out, and you got at the very worst a really, really good perimeter defender in the playoffs. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, and then yeah, this Kyrie situation, you've actually managed after you know, kind of doing a bit of a deal with the devil, like doing whatever he wanted for the last three mm. seasons, uh, and him. I mean, yeah, he blew up like your kind of on-court play probably on three separate occasions you know like like yeah he was injured and then there was like you know uh wanting to play with Harden and then there was the the various sit-outs you Mm. know during COVID and all of this stuff and yeah and you've managed to trade him for Spencer Dinwiddie Dorian Finney-Smith and an unprotected 2029 first so that's it's it's like they they haven't they haven't really uh they haven't really incurred the full brunt force of like you know yeah. the fasty impact that they made yeah i think um man i think oh man if the nets win the ring this year <clears throat> that would be such a narrative shift in the nba as mm. well mm. like not only do you have like oh my god they f- brooklyn and i finally figured out when they shared harden and Kyrie. um kd wins a ring with like help with like less help than he did with his other rings mm. um ben simmons wins a ring <laughs> yeah. uh and <laughs> And then I think I think I think it just I think it just completely I think there is still this like chorus for Kyrie and I mm. think it just completely nullifies them as yeah. well. Do you think is that like the death of I don't want to say the death of the super team because I I, mm-hmm. I I don't I don't love that like super team idea of like mm-hmm. oh you get two of the best players in the league playing together. It's not a super team, it's just like mm. good basketball players want to play with each other. Yeah. Uh but like if KD wins a ring and like the next best player on his roster is like I don't know, barely scratching the top 50 mm. best NBA players. Like, does does that kind of change how you look at constructing a championship team? That that we'll find out. <laughs> but speaking of constructing a championship team, the other side of this coin, Kyrie Irving to the Mavs uh, and Markeith Morris. Um, man, I, I think this is a great move by the Mavs. I think that... Um, you worst case scenario you have max contract this off season and i'm sure there's going to be a player out there i don't know who the free agents are this mm. season definitely should have looked it up it's james harden is the biggest name yeah uh, well maybe maybe yeah. not him. <laughs> but i think yeah you yeah, have next piece is russell westbrook so. oh, fuck okay <laughs> well maybe you want to keep okay so worst case scenario uh, is I'll, I'll get it up we'll talk about it we'll talk, we'll talk about it in a bit yeah, you have keep going you up. have the money to sign a max contract this off season 
Best case scenario is Kyrie like reestablishes himself as who he once was in the league, and then you have him have him under contract for the next couple of years. Kyrie is averaging twenty seven five and five this year, which is like pretty fucking bonkers. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and he's played forty out of fifty one games, um, including that that patch he missed at the start of the season. But over the past thirty five games, he's played in thirty two of them, and I think that's a pretty good sample, and that's a pretty good return. For, um, man, even a superstar in the league like mm. this year, or like you know, over the past few seasons, <clears throat> it's not very common for a superstar to play that many games, um, like to play what, yeah. whatever thirty-two out of thirty-five games is a percentage. Mm. Like, it's not common for a superstar to be that available. I'm not so, sorry, superstar. I'm not saying he's a superstar, but he is definitely a star. Um, but I think that this, it's a promising sample, and I think that it's just going to look so good, Kyrie and uh, Luca. Mm. And I think that they'll be deadly together eventually. I don't know how long it'll take, um, and I think it, they they will be like a filling out thing. But I think I think once it's once it's rolling, they're going to be they're going to be killer. Like I just think they'll play well together. I think yeah. they're both as as like <clears throat> as hateable as Kyrie is. I think he's really good at playing with other superstars, yeah. and I think Luca will like. I don't think he'll be able to. I think he'll see Kyrie coming in, like putting up twenty-five to thirty every night, and like not being able to argue with him. Being like, "Oh shit, this is so helpful. This is so handy." I don't. There's been so much stuff like, "Oh, how is Kyrie going to fit next to Luca? Like, he's a ball dominant player, and Luca is like the most ball dominant player in the league." Like, blah blah blah. I don't think he's ever had a trouble trouble fitting next to another superstar. <laughs> like, he wanted he won a ring with LeBron, and they look so good together yeah. as well. Uh, you know, I guess he was the, I, I haven't, I didn't experience the Boston stuff firsthand, but like he was a good player in Boston. Mm. Like he, he found a lot of success with that team. He was so good next to Harden. Like yeah. him and Harden were like a really, really good combo, uh, on offense at least. <laughs> um, so, and like as sort of, as much as his bread and butter is like one-on-one ISO ball, breaking people's ankles, like how are you not going to thrive yeah. in the space uh, and the situations that Luca creates, like you know, you know, he's not going to be like hitting, I don't know, five catch and shoot threes a game. Like that's not, he's not going to turn into that player. Mm. Uh, but I just don't get the idea that these two really, really good NBA players, one who we know can thrive next to other ball dominant players, won't be able to play well together. Like yeah. they'll, they'll figure it out. Um, you know, the stuff in Brooklyn, it was never, it was never on the court that they couldn't figure it out. Mm, it was, yeah. it was all availability and like. You know relationships between the players, and obviously every other piece of bullshit that comes with being Kyrie Irving. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a bit unfounded. Do you think? What do you think of the price? Do you think have the Mavs given up too much? Or mm, I think the the jump up from Dinwiddie to Kyrie, you don't even think of. Mm. And I think maybe DFS is just the cost of doing business at that point. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you should worry about the pick <clears throat> if no, you have Luca. What's he twenty three, four in twenty twenty seven? He'll be five years older than either of those numbers. Yeah. So he'll be right in his prime. Um, I think, I don't think it's a bad price. I think maybe it's like, it's a lot more than what the Lakers bid was, but I'm sure there would have been 10 teams with bids in yeah. between the Mavs and what, what the Lakers was. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see, uh, cause I think kid piece of shit. I think kid will, Get so much out of them, man. I think he'll like actually get so much out of them offensively, um, and I'm excited to see how Kid uses Luca off ball. Um, and I think another thing, <clears throat> I hate to get into like the glitz and glam of it, but like Luca is, I mean, the, Dallas is just Luca's, and mm. like everyone knows it. Dallas might be Luca's. Oh no, Milwaukee is Giannis's more than Dallas is Luca's, but that's. Yeah. And Ste- and Golden State Stephs, but like those are the names yeah, yeah, that like yeah, you yeah. that are, those are impenetrable. Like those, everyone in the basketball world knows that those places are those players, mm-hmm. and I think Kyrie would know that as well. And I think that there was a there was a there was a part of um Brooklyn that was like, oh, we're all going together, like we're all establishing ourselves as like who we are and figuring out our roles. Whereas mm. with with the Mavs, all all Kyrie has to do is like take on the Brunson and then Dinwiddie role. And then take on like a, another portion of or a, a separate role, which I'm sure he would have fulfilled. Well, I've seen him fulfill in so many different scenarios. So I think this is going to be really good. I think Dallas is going to be really good. Yeah. Now 
I think we're talking very short term here, as in yeah. to the end of the 2022 yeah. 23 NBA season. Um, I think I like because I'm very, very positive about this on court. Like, I will stand by that. On a much, on a more long term thinking, though, like, I just, there is a lot that can go wrong. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the first sort of, you know, the, um, what's the word? The logistical problem is, uh, yeah, Kyrie's an un- unrestricted free agent at the end of the season. Um, I think they're not, they're not going to have contract extension talks this season. Yeah. Like they, if, if they do, it's going to be at the end of the season after they see how he goes, but also I guess after Kyrie sees how he likes yeah. the situation. Um, and you know, if another better situation pops up, um, so that's, that's obviously an issue. Do you, would you re-sign him for the max? Like, at the end of the season, you just let's just let's just say he's let's say he misses five games for the rest of the mm-hmm. season and he averages twenty seven five and five. Yeah, and let's not think too much about the playoffs. I'm thinking even if it's like twenty five five and three, yeah, like a minor drop. Um, I think I'd be happy with that because that's better than what Brunson did, and what Brunson did was great, and that's better than what Dinwiddie did, and what Dinwiddie did was great. Uh, and I just think it's that like tier above, maybe even tier and a half above what those guys did that would just be deadly. And then and then I think the solutions towards building a contender become a lot more obvious after mm. that. I think then you can really just figure out the roster around Luca and um, Kyrie. Yeah. Because it, at, as is, sorry, take it like back two days, the, at the, Mal- the Mavericks as constructed... People were like, they need to make a move. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we were just saying they need to make a move. And I think I think the biggest loss would, from this would be DFS if things don't go well. Because he's just, yeah, as we said, a perfect fit next yeah. to a superstar. But I think that this is a risk you need to take. Yeah. And I think it I actually think it'll pay off. Yeah. Like they needed a star and he was an available star. And stars just don't become available yeah. much anymore. Yeah. I'll, I don't know, about three of them moved to different teams. So <laughs> <laughs> um, but like he's definitely better than Levine and Beal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, who are the other names like linked to like the, what trade package can the Mavericks do? Yeah. Um, now, do you think it'll blow up off court? <laughs> Man, I was thinking about it. It's interesting because I feel like he'll almost have more freedom in Dallas. Hundred percent. Yeah. Bro, this is <laughs> like this is the worst in terms of like morality. This is the worst organization in the yeah. NBA. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, you know, Mike Cuban could probably not give a shit yeah. about what you say. Uh, Jason Kidd, obviously a very, very bad person. Yeah. Or, or lots and lots of talks about bad workplace culture yeah. there every off season. Um, Luka Doncic, those, the Eastern Europeans, like, mm. you, you, don't know their, you don't know their views on certain things. Um, and, you know, he's, he's, a very, he's a very, you know, he's a, he's a straightforward guy. He's, mm. not, he's not interested in... Yeah, like, I don't think he's going to care about Kyrie talking about his third eye or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's true. But I do also think, like, you just have to... You have to... You have to look at form. And Kyrie's form is that, like, an issue crops up. Yeah. Once a season, wherever he is, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also think that Mark Cuban might be the best owner to have for, like, an uncouth star. Yeah. Because if, if, if Kyrie came out and was like, the Dallas Mavericks always have the most white players on the team... Um, Mark Cuban should like be held accountable for this. He'll come out. Mark Cuban would come out and be like, "I fucking love it." Yeah. Like he would actually just be like, "I'm gonna ride with this team. I have to. I've invested so much money." Yeah, in yeah. Like that's how I think he'd see it. He'd yeah. be like, "I love it. I love. I love the Kyrie mm-hmm. came out and said that." Um, so yeah, I actually think this is kind of an ecosystem for the off court stuff as well. Mm. Isn't that crazy how the Nets talk was all about like the depth and the role players and the Kumbaya, <laughs> and then the Mavs talk was all about the superstar. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Um, well, should we turn that M upside down? <laughs> yeah. um, well, here, yeah, let's take a short break and then we'll be right back. So, just keep your head up and keep moving forward. Hold W, big dog. Sorry. And we're and back. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I love that. Marco, what did you do Sunday? <laughs> I went to a game of basketball with my good friends. My oh, good yes. friends, Lucas and Alessio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, that was me. Um, <laughs> we went to Melbourne versus Bendigo in Parkville. Mm-hmm. Um, Melbourne versus Bendigo V2 or part two. Uh, because we talked about Melbourne v Bendigo part one a couple of weeks ago uh, when Bendigo came back <clears throat> um, and won that tight game. <clears throat> uh, 
this game was anything but tight. <laughs> yeah, it was very, very watchable. Yeah, and like definitely, definitely kept um, our attention for a forty-point blowout. Yeah, because the Melbourne Boomers shot something like 68, 68 80 splits or something. I think you're right on the money. I do have it up. Here. <laughs> but uh, 60, 60, wait, yeah. 66, 68, 88. <laughs> Fucking unbelievable. It was inc- it was ridiculous to see. It was insane. At halftime, <clears throat> I think Melbourne was shooting 56% from three yeah. and we're like, they can't keep that up. They got better <laughs> in the second half. Yeah, what were your takeaways from the game? Um, yeah, well, it was funny. Like we were watching it and it went exactly the same as the game a few <laughs> weeks ago. Where it was like, all right, Melbourne are just like stopping everything inside for the spirit. Um, you know, they're getting hot. And then, yeah, just no spirit comeback. <laughs> yeah. Launched. Um, uh, Tiffany Mitchell is so, so, so good. Like, she's just so talented. Uh, it was, yeah, so nice watching her play in person. She's so shifty. Mm. She just, like, changes direction on a dime. She's such a silky finisher. Um, Kayla George had, like... I, that's a... You know, I, I haven't been to a... I haven't been to very few basketball games live. So that would be like, you know, easily one of the most dominant performances yeah. I've ever seen in a basketball game. She, uh, 27 points, eight rebounds, five assists. Uh, she shot five of six from three. Incredible. Um, and 11 of 13 overall. No free throws. And and the, the threes were like, they weren't open. There mm. was that one. I think it was the last one she hit. Uh, we were sitting like kind of on the wing, like a bit towards uh, one side of the court. Oh, quite towards one, one like one end of the court. Yeah. Um, and we were, we had like a beautiful. You had a beautiful view from the corner, mm. and it was like very late in the sh- shot clock. She caught it. She was being guarded very closely. I can't remember by high, who. Annalie Maley. It, it was it was Annalie. Uh, MVP Annalie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> who she has a few inches on. I would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and a few kegs. On. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and she just splashed it over her. Um, and you're like, you. I think she, yeah, she was five of five after that. And it's like you just you actually can't keep shooting like this um, when you're that tall. Mm. Uh, so yeah, that, those were the really special performances for me. But yeah, just Melbourne was so locked in and. They were doing, as you you pointed out, every time the Spirit would get a bucket or get a little run going, they'd call a timeout, even when they were like 25 points up. The first, the, the second quarter, I think the, the Spirit caught, made two field goals and they were followed by two Melbourne timeouts. Yeah. <laughs> um, this was definitely, having been at the first game, this was like such a must win for the Boomers mm. and they, they treated it like that. I think that <clears throat> Bendigo kind of let that happen. Mm. I think that Bendigo got beaten Mm. and Melbourne like just completely outplayed them and took them out of the game. But I think that Bendigo kind of just like accepted it um, a bit, Uh, which was a bit of a concern, especially for a team that has like uh, championship aspirations. Mm. Um, On the spirit side, Abby Wehram shot five of eight from three. Uh, And I kept saying throughout the game, why (laughs) are they not just giving her the ball every time? Because the shots they were working for, I mean, what do you, you don't even call it working for. They were just like, yeah. The shots they were getting, yeah. the shots they were that and they ended up shooting, um, they were just so they were just so bad, and a lot of that had to do with the Boomers D. I think uh, they set the tone early, the Boomers, and where the game changed at the start of the second quarter, um, the first game it didn't change this time. Um, but yeah, uh, Mila Goodchild as well, six of six from mm-hmm. three for the Boomers. Kayla George, as you said, five of six from three. It was just crazy. Um, Christy Wallace had 20 points Tiffany Mitchell had 14 points loud, Such a loud 14 yeah. points Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, And just like Her impact was just so felt on the game And then yeah Olivia Nelson and Dota as well mm. um, Just controlled Just owned the paint Yeah, and yeah That that big rotation mm. for Melbourne Is just so good Like, yeah I think, yeah Nelson and Dota is going to be Just grow into such a good player she has, Yeah She has the best frame She's just like uh, Like so mobile So agile Fucking very very long arms mm. she's got she's got she's got that raptors frame which are like mm. you don't see much in women's basketball yeah. like where you're like oh my god your arms are, they're too long man. <laughs> yeah um and yeah i think the spirit were also sort of i think they were undone by like some pretty not bad individual performances but like annalee mailey just couldn't get a shot yeah to fall. she was one of 13 yeah um yeah. That was probably the one where it was like you could have hit eight of them. Yeah, exactly. like you just missed the eight of those yeah, shots, yeah. and then that yeah, that completely changed the game. Yeah, exactly right. Um, but yeah, great, great watch, great crowd mm. sitting next to the cutest 
the cutest family. The <laughs> dad and his what five kids? Four it seemed kids? like yeah, it was four or five. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a lot of kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he was just he was just asking asking Lucas questions about. <laughs> about the game all game long like, mm. uh, the resident w the WNBL expert in the crowd <laughs> <laughs> but yeah he would turn to me and then just re- relay the information to his yes. kids it was, it was so sweet so cute um, but yeah really great watching I can't can't wait for another game in the boombox yeah um, now the also oh oh so okay two things that just came up first of all Kayla George, uh, 27 points on 13 field goal attempts. Uh, that is Zion-esque Zion Williams above numbers. two points per shot attempt. However, she did it with no free throw attempts, Yeah, which is fucking insane. Crazy. <clears throat> uh, and second, staying on Kayla George. Um, yeah, they, they, they announced uh, before the game and then in her post-game interview after the game that she had just signed with the Las Vegas Aces. And it was nice. It was a really good feeling in the arena. And... Um, yeah, she was just like humble as ever. Yeah. She was completely her like fucking unbelievably charismatic self. Yeah, legit. Um, but like still very much in the moment and focused on the rest of this season. Yeah. Now, before we get on to your take or your thoughts on getting uh, Kayla George uh, in your in your beautiful hometown of Vegas, <laughs> um, also want to mention that the Aces traded away uh, a center, Amanda Zahui Bazuku. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just think that that opens up even more minutes uh, yeah. down low for, you know, backup bigs. Mm. Uh, and right now it's looking like Kayla Francis could be the first big off the bench for the Kayla, Aces. Kayla Frank. Ka- Kayla Francis George. No, <laughs> Kayla George. Kayla George. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously we've discussed how the Aces have an embarrassment of riches uh, and those riches, the rich get richer. Um yeah, like she's she's such a good player. She's so versatile. I think we I think we spoke about this last time we when we last spoke about the the boomer spirit, mm. uh, the last matchup. But like she can kind of do anything. Like yeah. she's a good defender. Uh, she can shoot the three. The I want to say the ten to eighteen footer for, on the baseline <laughs> is just uh, money. She's a really good finisher inside. You know she's mobile enough to kind of you know. Not 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 defend not defend up and down the court, but like that she can deal with a switch. But yeah, I think her role is going to be very limited in Vegas. Yes, um, like it's going to be so good to have like a, a talented backup like that, like someone mm. who can do a lot of things. Because uh, I think often often your backup bigs just turn into like, all right, well yeah, you're tall and you know you're 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 rim runner or like you're a big body. Um, and I think she's like a lot more than that. Uh, so yeah, I, but I think it's just going to be injuries. If, uh, Candace and Asia, you know, need, need a bit of a, what you call it, uh, load management, mm. if you will. Um, but I'm, I'm interested to see how she plays like with either of them on the court, because I think like there's some really interesting, there's some really interesting stuff you can do on offense with her alongside those two other players. Like, because she's, she is multi-talented. Like there is, there is a lot that she can do, and yeah, I wonder if there's even, I don't know, I, I, is there is, is there like three minutes a game where you have all three of them on the court mm. and just you know, uh, play Asia at the three where she's just a bit more mobile and just go absolutely, absolutely body up the mm. other team. I really like that idea. I don't think that no. it would be the case. I think Hammond loves like. Uh, one or two bigs Definitely. and that's it. And yeah. then just like, Usually one, which yeah. <laughs> is, you know, which is going to make next season so interesting. Yeah. Um, but I think Candace Parker last season played 32 out of possible 36 games before the, that season, 23, 22, and 22. So she like mm. has missed uh, a bit of time over the past few seasons. <clears throat> and then also minutes per game in reverse chronological mm. order, 28, 26, 30, 26, which is, you know, that leaves, you know, it's, touch over half the game but yeah. like it leaves a quarter and a half pretty much yeah for her to be backed up and then asia i mean well i wouldn't be surprised if she averaged like 38 minutes she, she definitely will yeah <laughs> but like the other two minutes yeah uh kayla george could also but yeah. i mean you also you never know like it could kind of break the nba uh the, sorry the WNBA um form here by you know resting asia during the regular yeah. season and just having her absolutely primed for the playoffs yeah like I, I don't I think I think in the WNBA they just like to play as often as they can because they're yeah. not you're not playing as many games you're not playing back to backs yeah um, 
But yeah, I do. I see. I see what you're saying. Like, there's yeah. def, there's definitely room in the rotation for it. And like, it'll be it'll be less of like, a, all right, cool. She's gonna help this team be good because we're gonna be really good. Mm. And more like, I think just like great opportunity for her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, actually, during the regular season last year, Asia played 30 minutes a night, and yeah. then it was the playoffs. She played 30. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I I I forgot to mention as well. We also we also waived our other center, um, Ileana Rupe. Oh there. no yeah, shit! Yeah, 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 yeah. We waved her this morning, so there's we're really. Ma- I think like that's almost making room for yeah. Taylor George, if anything. Is Kia Stokes still on the team on the roster? Um, out of contract, reserved, restricted type beat. I have. I actually, actually can't remember. It always shocks me how many of the players are out of contract but still have their rights. Yeah, uh, like the their team has their their old team yeah. has their rights. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure. I'm sure we can come back to it some yeah. other time. <laughs> Uh, did the Aces make any other moves in the past week? No, I think that was it. Yeah, just bolstering their front court, which yeah. was definitely like the glaring hole. We made, we made a few training camp yeah, signings, yeah. but you know, that's just, that's cost, just bread and butter, isn't it? The cost of doing cost business. Of doing business. <laughs> uh, well, over in the uh, on the other coast, um, shaping up for an absolute clash of the Titans this year. <laughs> Brianna Stewart did end up signing with the New York Liberty. We talked about it at the end of, uh, during last episode. Uh, Courtney Vandersloot also followed her. Also, I ended up watching a Fenerbahce game mm. um, after that. Nice. After that. I watched like a quarter and they just didn't go to Stewie. Um, oh, what? And like they barely went to Mieseman. It was very, it was very what interesting. What the hell? Yeah. It was very, and Sloot wasn't playing. <laughs> so like it was very interesting to see like the way they, um, the way they played. Yeah. And they still ended up winning the game. I, I can't mm-hmm. remember who they were playing against. Oh, they were playing against fucking Alyssa Thomas. Mm-hmm. Like it was the most True, stacked. Yeah, yeah. And Breonna Jones. Like it was the most stacked yeah. game. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> anyhow, that's a bit of a bit, bit of a side dra- uh, sidebar. But the New York Liberty have now added John Quell Jones, Connie Vandersloot, and Brianna Stewart in the same off season. Uh, it was pretty heartbreaking to see Stewie leave. But I thought about it. I have had a lot. I've had a lot of time to think about it actually since our last episode mm. and since the news break broke. But I think. That it's my fault that for not following the league sooner and not going for the storm sooner because she delivered two championships to Seattle, and that's like I think she's done her job at that point. Yeah. If you're the best player on a ring twice, and then you want to leave, like more power to you. Mm. Um, but I think yeah, this is fucking. This is gonna be awesome. Like yeah. this season's gonna be seriously awesome. Oh, oh thanks, wow! Ed. Would you look at that? That smells unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are your what are your like? I, th- I get simmered down now. It broke maybe five or six days ago. But what do you what were your thoughts on Stewie the Liberty? Yeah, I think it's so good. I yeah. think it's uh, as you said. I think it's the best thing. I it might be like in terms of like movements. Obviously, not having followed uh, women's basketball for very long, but it feels like it feels like one of the best things that can happen for the sport. Yeah, in terms of like just how good the quality of the product is going to be in this upcoming season. And I think you were, you were saying this to me all through the week, like they got to capitalize on this. Like mm. they've got to just be absolutely touting these two super teams. Every time they play, it's got to be on ESPN. Yeah. Like, um, and I think, I think especially in, I do think they're like two franchises that are probably, <laughs> uh, that are really c- committed to that as well. Like, um, <laughs> You, know, you could have done that over there. Sorry, Ned's just <laughs> opening up the chips. <laughs> oh yeah, we'll have one on here. Why not? Oh yeah. Anyway, as you were saying, um, yeah, like New York Liberty, owned by Joe Sai as well, mm. um, who has really like, like, with these two teams, he's really trying to like bring the focus in basketball away from. Not away from the Knicks, but like make mm, you know true. make Brooklyn like another home of basketball mm. in New York. Um, you know, like they yeah they can't sell Nets games, but they're always getting like other celebrities there, mm. like celebrities who aren't at the Knicks games to be mm. there. Um, and it's the same with the Liberty. Like, and then yeah, we know that. Uh, yeah, the Aces have really really put a lot into trying to make make like a kind of commercial franchise. Mm. You know, like. I think, it, again, when we were talking about this off mic, like, or maybe it was on mic. Like, they're, they're the villains of the WNBA and very, very intentionally. Like, they, yeah. really, they really play into uh, all, of, all of their characters. And, yeah, our owner is also, like, 
such a fan of the team. Yeah. Like he's at every game. He's he's getting angry at the refs. He's looking like a complete weirdo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, like he's he's trying to create that. It almost feels like he's trying to be like the Mark Cuban of the mm. WNBA, where he's like, I'm I'm the visu- the like very visible, like mm. boisterous businessman uh, who's like put his heart and soul into this team as well as his money. <laughs> um, and so I think yeah, these are like the two best franchises that this could have happened to. But I mean, obviously they're the ones with the impetus to go out yeah. and make, make that happen as well. So that's interesting. Do you reckon Joe Sai was like, hang on, New York is crazy for basketball, mm. but they haven't had a good team in X amount of years. Yeah. And then it's like, and then also the side thought of like, and the Knicks suck, yeah. and like they really suck. Um, and look at how much their like, yeah. noise they're still generating. Why don't I just get these two other teams yeah. that are in New York and just build them? Hundred percent. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Hundred percent. I think that's what it is. And yeah, I mean, like, yeah, we've ju- we just spent the first half of this episode talking about like the men's side, and yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we're doing. They're like, yeah, let's bring in as many fucking stars as we yeah. can and do whatever we can to make Damn, it work. Damn, busy week of business for Joe. Yeah. Stein. Oh man, he must have been on the blower day, <laughs> day and fucking night, nonstop. <laughs> um, now, before we go, I think we should probably go <laughs> everything that's happening around us. For anyone not watching, uh, El Jana has been delivered. Um, I just wanted to make mention of the LA Sparks off-season mm. moves. They just keep making like solid, solid signings. Um, I'll get them up right now. Yeah, but, I, got, I got some here. Yeah. Sorry, WNBA, not ESPN. Um, so crazy. what, Jasmine Thomas? Yeah, solid. Uh, Diarca Hamby? Solid. Uh, Steph Talbot? Solid. So solid. Uh, Azure Stevens? So solid. Like probably the best player that you've named and those other three are so good. Yeah. And now they're yet to uh, actually sign Nyeka Ogwamike, but yeah. that feels like an eventuality yeah, now yeah. because yeah, of the definitely. other signings that they've made. Like this is like the roster that they're going to build with yeah. her on it. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 They're all, you're right. Like this, they're obviously, these aren't the like, um, you know, compared to the other off season moves, this is like, oh, whatever. If you look, want to look at it like that, but these are all like players who I really like and trust. Yeah. You know, I think all four of those signings that we just mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. They could really be the third best team next year. Yeah. Definitely. Um, like obviously you need to see how it works and then Connecticut will still be great. I think. Yeah. But I don't know, man. Uh, the sky seemed to have fallen out of that. Mm. And I think that'll be part two. <laughs> next week yeah, of WNBA we'll free, free week. agency, but go on. Um, I just had this thought. I'm, I'm really, I'm really coming up with this take as it develops. But yeah, if LA are the third best team, that's so good for the WNBA True. as well because oh yeah, God. a team in Los Angeles, the the city of angels, Showtime mm. baby, all of that. Uh, if those are the three best teams in the WNBA, that feels like to me like how you draw in the most fans. Yeah. That, yeah, such a good point. Oh, my God. Great, great. <laughs> Fucking great point, Martin. All right, well, should we say goodbye for now? Yeah. Uh, so, we'll see you next week. Yeah, we're going to do, what, the, the bad of WNBA yeah. free agency I as reckon. it develops next week. Yeah. Um, and also, I mean, there might be a couple more. There surely will be some more. Yeah. All right. See you then. Bye. Bye.